everyone. Now, I know that it's hard to keep up on top of what's going on in the Holy Land, but if you want to know more about what's happening here in Israel, I'm Aaron Porras, and this is the Weekly Review. It may not have been completely unexpected, but the peace deal between Israel and the UAE seems to be taking over the headlines of the Middle East. If you thought other countries were going to follow the trend, you may be getting a little bit ahead of yourself. Rumors have been circling that Saudi Arabia could be next, but that may be a little bit over-optimistic. More in the next report. Betrayed, stabbed in the back. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas choosing his words carefully while reacting to the deal between Jerusalem and Abu Dhabi, which he says didn't take the Palestinian situation into consideration. The UAE saying that their new communication with Israel is a better prospect for peace than being cut off completely. The historic agreement was expected to roll over into other Middle Eastern and North African countries. The Saudi foreign minister said that part of the agreement could be viewed as positive, but making it clear that a deal with Israel is off the table until Israel makes peace with the Palestinians. The Trump administration, who helped broker the deal with the UAE, are slightly more optimistic. Meanwhile, Pakistan says it stands with Riyadh. Prime Minister Imran Khan telling a local news channel that his country will not recognize Israel until there is a Palestinian state acceptable to the Palestinians. In Sudan, a foreign ministry spokesperson was fired shortly after revealing secret talks between Khartoum and Jerusalem telling Skynet News Arabic earlier this week that a peace treaty could be signed as early as the end of the year, apparently without authorization from his superiors. بين السودان وإسرائيل. The country's acting foreign minister later admitting that he was surprised by the announcement, saying the matter of relations with Israel has not been discussed in the foreign ministry at all. While some are being more forthright than others, Israeli authorities are confident that the UAE deal is just the beginning of a new Middle East. Nitney Manson, ILTV. <laughs> Now, as Israelis, by and large, are still celebrating peace with the UAE, many in Israeli settlements are calling out Jerusalem for abandoning long-promised plans for annexation. I was very happy. Not that I don't want sovereignty, not that I don't want peace, but I want everything. Uh, I think peace will, is always good because peace is the opposite of war. But I don't think the Jewish nation has to give up any of its treasures, any part of its homeland, of our homeland, for a peace treaty. <laughs> but not all the settlement residents are upset. I'm very excited about the peace with the Emirates. The peace with the Emirates is coming. Meanwhile, COVID-19 infection numbers still rising at an alarming rate in Israel. Officials in the coronavirus cabinet set to meet today and discuss the best steps forward as the country nears the high holiday season. Aaron Porras reports. Starting with the good news, allaying fears about Israel's fate, coronavirus czar Professor Oni Gamzu is reporting that Israel's COVID-19 mortality rate is actually the lowest in the world per capita. The bad news, infection rates are still holding at nearly 11 percent nationwide. And with the high holiday season nearly here, Gamzu is reiterating that his main goal is just to fight the virus as much as possible without having to resort to full lockdowns a goal he warns may not be so successful. We have to realize that combating, containing corona is not only a medical situation. It's a social, economy a challenge that you have to balance. So what is really the actions that we are taking? Preserving hospitals, reinforcing them, reinforcing the community care, and parallel to that, we have to build up our infrastructure. Infrastructure for what? 
for continuing the struggle with corona for months to come. To do this, Gamzu lays out a three-pronged attack. First, to regain trust and confidence with the public by increasing understanding and being open with decision-making. Second, to cut the chain of transmission through contact tracing, questioning, and quarantine, adding that people should self-isolate the moment they feel sick, even before getting tested. And finally, by holding local officials like mayors and community leaders responsible for the fight as the fall and winter flu season approaches. This including by creating facilities in each community to manage the crisis, and by having each local leader work closely with the health ministry, the IDF, and the police. Now, going back to Gamzu's first prong, though, the question now is whether or not the government can trust the public. Israeli Border Patrol officials now alleging that dozens of forms used by Israelis to board flights overseas may be forgeries. The audit, revealing that the documents in question all came from the same clinic and doctor in Jerusalem, though the clinic denies any wrongdoing on its part. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is similarly clarifying Israel's challenges amidst supposedly misleading reports. יש לנו את דור עצום, מגפה עולמית, הקורונה, אנחנו נאבקים בה, ולא רק אנחנו, בהרבה מדינות. לשמחתנו, התמותה יחסית בישראל, אבל כפי שכואב לנו על כל אחד, היא יחסית נמוכה. אבל אני רוצה להגיד לכם שטיפלנו אתמול, או שלשום, טיפלנו מספרים מדהימים. אף אחד לא יודע את זה, כי התקשורת לא דיווחה את זה בצורה השלמה והמלאה. אמרו שהכלכלה שלנו התקבצה, שאנחנו במיתון, כל העולם במיתון. אבל המיתון בישראל, מידת ההתכווצות של התוצר שלנו לפי הלשכה המרכזית לסטטיסטיקה, הוא בדיוק חצי, חצי מההתכווצות, מהמיתון שיש באירופה וכמעט בכל מדינות העולם. But as for the low mortality rate, new reports showing that the statistics may not be so straightforward. The health ministry admitting now that it missed at least 53 deaths since July. Officials saying the discrepancy results from patients being treated outside hospital, in nursing homes and the like. Whatever the reason, though, this brings Israel's death toll up to at least 789, rising from around 720 overnight. Active infections also gaining by 1,637 in the past 24 hours, to over 23,900. The IDF once again conducting late-night air raids and strikes against terror groups in Gaza on Tuesday. These latest retaliations in response to rocket launches towards southern Israeli civilian populations, sending thousands of Israelis running to shelters across the region. Two little girls getting injured while running for cover, receiving treatment later in hospital. 39 fires were also sparked in Israel as well Tuesday by the continued and growing use of incendiary balloons or kites flown indiscriminately into Israel from the Strip. Two additional explosive devices attached to balloons were also discovered, police sappers responding and detonating them far from the public. The Palestinian Hamas terror group, for its part, claims to be instigating the recent violence in attempts to convince Israel to give in to their demands, such as opening the Kerem Shalom crossing, clearing more Gaza imports, extending Israeli work permits to 100,000 Gaza residents, greenlighting UN projects to boost employment, and extending the Gaza fishing zone to 20 nautical miles. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, on the other hand, is speaking with regional council leaders in the south, saying that Israel has raised sanctions on Gaza, while the IDF has been operating against Hamas and other terror group targets in the Strip for the last 10 days. I think that Hamas is a big mistake. אם, אם הוא ימשיך בזה, הוא מקבל כבר עכשיו אינדיקציה לאן זה יוביל, הוא בוודאי יזכור אה, לאן זה הוביל, אני מקווה שגם הג'יהאד אה, האסלאמי יזכור לאן זה הוביל, אנחנו לא חסכנו בשום אה, אה, אמצעי, לרבות אה, במקרה הצורך של התפתחות אה, המערכה, גם של סיכולים ממוקדים, וגם היום אין לנו מגבלה כזאת. Palestinian attacks against Israelis rising in number and severity every day for a week now. The latest attack overnight in Jerusalem. Please be advised the following images contain graphic content and may be hard to watch. The terror suspect removing a hidden knife from his pants, slowly, cautiously approaching the security gate, and then going for the kill, stabbing the nearest guard, mayhem and panic resulting, the suspect shot and neutralized. This was the scene in Jerusalem's old city Monday night as the unnamed assailant stabbed and lightly wounded a 19-year-old Israeli security officer. A 60-year-old woman who had been just behind the attacker also being wounded in the chaos. 
انا ماشي من الفوت على الباب ما شفت الا الطخ كاين جيت تهرب انا وبنتي ما لقيتش بنتي ما لقيتش بنتي ماشي صار صوت يعني both the border police officer and the injured woman are reportedly in stable condition, though, after getting treatment at hospital. The suspect, on the other hand, not so lucky. Witness videos going viral on social media showing him lying in the alley after being shot dead. Another unnamed individual coming to apply pressure to his wounds, too late to help. This incident comes as tensions between Israelis and Palestinians are rising dramatically, though, especially now in the wake of the new normalization agreement announced between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, with help, of course, from the United States. To the south, for one, terror attacks are also increasing. Gazan Palestinians under direction from the Hamas terror group picking up steam along the Israel-Gaza border, launching several rocket attacks in recent days, causing damages to an Israeli residential home, and flying dozens of explosives and incendiary balloons or kites into Israeli civilian communities every day for a week now, causing dozens of fires per day and burning nearly 2,000 acres of farmland and natural reserves. That's eight square kilometers or three square miles turned to ash. And at least 20 fires were sparked on Monday alone, including one at an Israeli kindergarten. Israeli forces then, as per policy, targeting Hamas infrastructure in the Strip with airstrikes. Meanwhile, the normalization of ties between Israel and the United Arab Emirates still dividing the region. But Israeli lawmakers are warning those who oppose the new agreements not to push too hard at the risk of their own brethren. Palestinian officials and their backers from all walks of life feeling betrayed by the recent normalization between Israel and the UAE, levying threats against Israel's new regional partners in the wake of the change to decades of policy in which Gulf states said they'd only make peace with Israel after the Palestinians do. But sparks flying in the Knesset Monday as Israeli lawmakers warn those in opposition to the deal that the times have seriously changed. <laughs> Meanwhile, top White House advisor Jared Kushner saying that the Palestinians' credibility has fallen to an all-time low, adding that, quote, the world is starting to block out the noise from Palestinian officials as predictable and illogical, and that even people who want to help the Palestinians are saying that you can't help people who don't want to help themselves. In reference to the reality that the Palestinians' longtime refusal to seriously negotiate with Israel can no longer hold the rest of the region back. I think that a lot of people in the region are seeing that uh, we can't wait for the Palestinian leadership to try and uh, resolve this. Every country is going to do what's in their best interests, what's in the region's best interests, and we have big problems in the world, and we can't be stuck in the past. We have to be moving forward. And this mirroring Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's recent comments, too. I think that the peace is in the same way. Only the peace of Israel between Israel and the Arab world is the one that has to be able to make peace with the Palestinians. Now, as for advancing the new bilateral agreement, Israeli officials are hard at work extending open arms to their new Emirati counterparts. Israeli President Rivlin inviting the UAE Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed to Jerusalem in an official statement in Arabic, calling the deal a brave and wise decision that will be appreciated for generations and no doubt lead others to follow suit. And to that end, Israeli officials already in contact with other Gulf states trying to get them to sign on the dotted line. Israeli Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi having now just spoken with his counterpart in Oman on Monday, while Mossad chief Yossi Cohen opens contact with officials in Bahrain. Turning back now to more positive discoveries, an ancient factory of sorts unearthed in the southern city of Rachat. Once again, an incredible discovery in Israel, teaching us more about the incredible peoples, cultures, and histories residing in this region for thousands of years. 
אנחנו נמצאים בבית עמידים מהתקופה האסלאמית מלפני 1200 שנה. המייחד את המבנה הזה, בית מלאכה לתעשיית סבון הנדיר ביותר שנתגלה עד כה והקדום ביותר שנתגלה עד כה. חומר גלם של התעשייה היה, היה שמן זית. תנאי המדבר הקשים, הרוח, האפר, חייבו את ההיגיינה הגבוהה של הגוף. והמשפחה הזאת עשתה את כספה מאותה התעשייה. הם בעצם שיווקו את הסבון לכל האזור, השתמשו גם, ב- גם בעצמם, ותנאי ההיגיינה הגבוהים היו חשובים לאוכלוסייה כבר אז, ולא רק בימים המטורפים של היום. Now the production of olive oil soap is mentioned in writings as early as the 10th century CE, and it's been a significant industry in the region practically ever since. The process, taking upwards of three months from start to finish, nearly all the tools and facilities needed for soap production being found at this site in Rahat. But that's not all. After all, it's not like people just lived soap making all day, every day. After that, people were working hard all day in the industry of soap. They were trying to get a little bit, a little bit to do a little bit. We found here a game of a game, a game of a game, a game of a game, a game of a game. שעדיין משחקים אותו עד היום, ואנחנו מכירים אותו עוד מימי האימפריה הרומית, ופעם ראשונה שאנחנו מוצאים כזה משחק מהתקופה האסלאמית הקדומה. So as mentioned, the game called the windmill has been around since as early as the second and third century CE or the Roman period. And another game called Hounds and Jackals or 58 Holes was found nearby. This game dating back even further to Egypt around 2000 before the common era. But finally, as with many amazing archaeological finds in Israel, these ancient discoveries are being unearthed in the process of making way for a new modern development to come through. שכמה שיותר יהיה פיתוח מהיר על מנת לאכלס את האנשים שיושבים פה בפוחנים, גם אין להם תשתיות, אין להם כלום, בשיתוף פעולה עם הרשות לתשבות הבדואים, ופשוט מאוד העיר הזאת נבנתה, יש לה את השורשים האסלאמיים שלה, ואנחנו גאים בשורשים האלה. Now for some good news on the COVID-19 front, an all-new test developed at the Sheba Medical Center just outside of Tel Aviv is showing a 95% success rate. But best of all, it's super quick and it's easy. All you need is spit. Nittany Manson reports. Okay, what you see here is actually a machine, a small device, uh, very uh, low cost, that uh, is doing a corona test uh, within uh, less than a second. The person is taking just a mouthwash, put the mouthwash inside the machine, and within one second he can get the result whether he's sick or not. The artificial intelligence-based test uses a small spectral device to analyze the salival specimen. An algorithm then tests whether the spit is COVID-19 positive, and all of this in seconds. The new testing method developed in partnership with Israeli firm News Site Imaging is in the process of gaining regulatory approval and then hopefully will be brought to market. And so far, we have also very promising results in this new method, which will be much more convenient and much, much more cheaper for the old governments who are dealing with the disease. And the great thing about this test, other than its speed and ease, is the flexibility in which it can be administered. You don't have to be in the lab, it can be at home. It can be in airports, it can be in uh, theaters, it can be um, work workplaces. It uh, actually can be in every place that you want to do some kind of uh, fast screening of uh, the public in order to make sure that everybody that goes into the premises is actually uh, healthy and doesn't have the corona. So hopefully someday soon, instead of just having our temperatures taken at the door, we may actually be able to be tested on the spot, which could potentially be a game changer in protecting our public spaces. Nittany Manson, ILTV. In other news, among all the exciting opportunities now opening up between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, the most pressing is, of course, cooperation in the fight against COVID-19. The Israeli Plura Stem Therapeutics and Abu Dhabi's Stem Cells Center getting set to collaborate in developing cell therapies as well as regenerative drugs for severe diseases like the coronavirus. The two companies having just signed a non-binding memorandum of understanding involving the exchange of research results, patient samples, and testing equipment. Similarly, the Israeli Tech Terra Group and the UAE's Apex National Investment have an agreement to collaborate on COVID-19 research, as have Israel's Rafael Advanced Defense Systems and Israel Aerospace Industries with Abu Dhabi's Group 42. 
All right, now by a show of hands, who doesn't love pickles? That's what I thought. But I bet you never had a sourized cucumber like these because an American expat in Tel Aviv is taking pickles to a whole new level. I'm talking shawarma, falafel, and even sabich flavor. Lauren Izo reporting with the pickle jar. Shawarma and amba flavor, falafel flavor, spicy mellow yellow. American-Israeli Jake Harriet's specialty pickles have become kind of a big deal. Located in the Jaffa flea market, the pickle jar is Israel's premier boutique pickle shop. And trust us, not only is it unique, but it's really tasty. You'd think I own a pickle shop. I have, must have loved pickles my whole life. No, not really. Probably six years ago, maybe I had my first pickle. I didn't know that it was a cucumber. I'll be honest, I was an extremely picky eater when I was a kid. I was eating french fries, chips, and that's it. My buddy turned me on to pickles. He's a green thumb. He's growing stuff in his garden all year long. So when he has cucumbers, he's making pickles with them. When he would make pickles and bring them around, me and my buddy, me and my friends, we would inhale this jar on site and shake him like more and more and more and more. And more. <laughs> so, you know, I moved to Israel. I couldn't bring him, I couldn't fit him in a backpack, so it's like I had to learn how to make the pickles that I love. First job here, doing customer support, just speaking English eight hours a day, not fun. Um, and I was making batches of pickles for people. I made one batch, two jars, second batch, four jars, making 20 jars for people. And it's like, this is where I get the idea I'd make pickles for a living. Pickles is a Jewish thing in America. I come over here as a Jew, it's Jew land, there's no pickle shop. So I just I put it all in, I built a pickle store, I quit my job and I started selling pickles. The presentation thing as a whole is getting huge in the States and I think the world, you know. A very, a very big trend and the reason is because it's healthy. I mean, it's also fun. Anything can be pickled. Honestly, I could pickle this couch. I just need a big jar. But I have a customer, he eats a whole jar of shawarma pickles in five minutes. I eat my pickles like a snack. The Hebrew word for vinegar is chometz and salt is melach. Those are the two most popular methods for making pickles. Uh, Homet's pickle more is because it's uh, more of a vehicle for flavor. I can put more things into it. When I have Israeli uh, customers come in, they say, you know, Bechomets or Bemelech. Yeah. And uh, they want the salt brine pickles mostly from my understanding because the Homet's pickles here suck because they're horrible. Um, but I do salt brine too. Whether you like them spicy, sweet, salty, or tangy, the pickle jar is here to scratch that pickle itch and show you that when it comes to the brine-based snack, the possibilities are truly endless. Any other ideas for upcoming flavors? So I'm thinking of a pickle rick flavor, and so maybe Sabiq one day. <laughs> Lauren Izo, ILTV. And that's it for ILTV's weekly review. I'm Aaron Porras. See you next week.